Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah Almighty's divine peace and blessings be with you, brothers and sisters. As human beings and as deputies of the Almighty, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he is going to create the human being as his deputy, his vice chairman, his khalifa within creation. As his deputies, we have been created with divine potential. Allah Almighty has granted the human being capacity and potential that has not been given to any other creation, any other creature. We have been given the power and the capacity to choose and to create and to do so in alignment with his divine will, in service to his will, in service to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, in truth and in reality. We have been honored and been given dominion over creation. To be a Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have dominion over the creation. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that when he created the human being, when he fashioned him and breathed into the human being from his spirit, then Allah is commanding all of creation to bow down in prostration to the children of Adam, alayhi salam. May peace and blessings be upon our great grandfather Adam alayhi salam and grandmother Eve. So as children of Adam, as human beings, we have been honored as deputies of the Almighty and creation has been commanded to submit before the human being. But not just any human being, a human being who knows who he is or who she is as a servant, as a deputy, as a vice gerent of the Almighty as a servant of the Creator. That divine power, that secret is buried within the hearts of human beings. And it's up to us to dive deeply inward to discover who we truly are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that neither the heavens, and this is in a hadith Qudsi, these are a grade of hadith, highly honored, transmitted by the Prophet wasallam. Not his words, but the words of Allah, yet not in the Quran. In a hadith Qudsi, the Prophet ﷺ has been recorded as having said that Allah is saying, Neither the heavens nor the earth can contain me except the heart of a believer. There are two aspects to the religion. There are two aspects to faith and to spirituality. One is the outer, one is the inner. And unfortunately, nowadays, most people are primarily focused just on the outer. We pray towards, for example, towards the Kaaba, the nominal house of God. Yet Allah is not in the Kaaba. It is a focal point for the entire Ummah, for the entire community to pray towards that sacred place of worship to unite the entire community. And it's a sacred place of worship, an honored place of worship, a divinely blessed house of God. Yet Allah cannot be found in the Kaaba. Where can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be found? What is the access point? Where is the access point to Allah's divine presence? It's within the heart of each human being through the breath of each human being. And just as Allah Almighty said, I am creating this creation, I'm fashioning him and breathing into him of my spirit, at that point, prostrate to him. Your breath is the key. The breath of the human being, it's the breath that connects us to the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why one of the great ulama of Islam, Shaykh Abdul Khalik al-Ghujduwani, I often cite and reference him he, Qadr who said that the first step upon the path of spiritual awakening and spiritual development is consciousness of your breath, breathing consciously, conscious breathing, awareness of the breath. In essence, he was describing what many people nowadays refer to as meditation. The breath in Islam is sacred. It is the key to the divine presence of Allah Almighty. It is through our breath that we connect with the source of life, Al-Hay. This is one of the names of Allah, Al-Hay. We cannot exist, we cannot live except through breathing. Everything in creation is in this process of respiration, right? Breathing in and out, inhaling and exhaling. Everything is pulsating through the power of Al-Hay, the ever-living one. And the power of the breath is such that it takes a human being from the outside inward. It takes us from the world of form, from the world of appearances, deep inward into the world of peace, into the world of presence, into the world of space. Meditation is the doorway. It is the gateway 
into what some now refer to as the quantum field, the field of possibilities. That field, the substrate of existence, which is pure potentiality, that field of energy, in Arabic known as Bahr al-Qudra, the ocean of energy, the ocean of power, the ocean of light. It is from this place that real choice is possible. It is from this place that true executing the will of Allah is possible. And that field, that domain, can only be accessed through deep, deep surrender, complete stillness and surrender of the self. It is deep within that field that the Holy Prophet ﷺ was immersed in the cave in Ghar Hira. What is the cave? It is a symbol for the self, going deep inward, in complete isolation, in complete seclusion, no distractions. And the only direction there is inward. And it was only when the Prophet ﷺ went so deeply inward that his heart was able to receive the revelation. Jibreel ﷺ was given permission to visit the Prophet ﷺ and to grant him the revelation of the Qur'an in Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, the night of divine energy, the night of the manifestation of the Qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beloved brothers and sisters, there are two worlds, there are two realities, the world of form, the world of matter, the world of appearances, which in reality is a world of illusion. And then there is the world of reality, the world of spirit, the world of energy, the world of light. If all we are focused on is the world of form, we are veiled from truth and reality. We must, as believers, take time to explore the world of space, the world of presence, the world of peace, the world beyond form, the world which gives rise to the world of form. All form is precipitation. All matter is precipitation from that ocean of energy, that ocean of light. And matter in reality veils light. It is a veil over the world of energy and the world of spirit. So although we interact with material things, with objects, with the material world, we must not be deceived in thinking that that is absolute reality. It is not. Islam is always pointing towards the spirit of things, the essence of things, and also of human beings. Hence, the attempt to de-emphasize form in the public sphere. It is that field that the Prophet ﷺ was connected to, and also that all of the great prophets and messengers were connected to. That was their access point to the Divine Presence of Allah. That is your access point to the Divine Presence of Allah. It is also the domain from which miracles emerge, from which karamat emerge. There's incredible research now being done by people, the likes of Dr. Joe Dispenza and others, that are demonstrating what is possible, right? Dr. Greg Braden is another one, that are demonstrating what is possible through the power of belief, through the power of the spirit, by tapping in to that divine field of quantum possibilities, what is possible? Healing is possible. Miracles are possible. Transformation is possible. And that is the path to awakening. We have a choice. We can continue through life in a half awake state doing our obligations our worship practicing the religion or to whatever degree we're capable of it's still largely rooted in the world of form in the world of illusion and we have a choice to go deeper to explore the deeper dimensions of the world of spirit my shaykh may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah may raise his soul and his spirit and his divine presence he used to say that many people are simply at the shore, looking at the water, but not going in. And then there are some who dip their feet and dip their toes in the water to see the temperature, but don't go too far. And then there are some who dive a little bit further deep into the ocean and begin to swim amongst the current. And then there are those who dive deep down into the depths of the ocean. And it is they who are able to uncover the treasures that lie hidden beneath. It is they who are able to bring back the most precious pearls to share with humanity. First and foremost, the prophets and messengers of God. Most notably, the last and final messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, The perfect, complete, whole messenger who carried within his way always all paths. You will find in Islam everything. Every aspect of every religion that is valid and true, 
you will find it within Islam, and you must if it is true. And all paths have some aspect of the truth that they are carrying and transmitting. In Islam, you'll find it in its completion and its perfection. In Islam, you'll find the perfection of religious practice and the perfection of spirituality, the way of Moses and the way of Jesus. Salam, peace and blessings be upon them all. Yet now in this day and age, our ummah, our community is completely lacking its spirituality. And spirituality is the key to human potential. Spirituality is the next frontier. And it was spirituality that allowed this ummah to rise to greatness in its early phase. And it will be spirituality that brings this ummah back out of its unconsciousness and its sleep, its slumber, its decay. Meditation is not required. It's not a requirement in the religion. However, it is essential. It is necessary if one is going to develop their spirituality. If we are truly going to surrender, which is what this religion is about, what all faiths and spiritual traditions have essentially always been about, the religion has always been from the beginning to the end, Islam, which means to surrender. If we are going to truly surrender, we must learn to become still. We must relinquish all tension and all resistance. We must learn to truly submit, to submit the entire being so that there is no resistance left in the body or the mind, so that there is no more tension left in the body or the mind. That is Islam. That is the state of Islam. And all of Islam is about learning to surrender the mind. This is why we prostrate. This is why we put the forehead to the ground in an act that symbolizes the surrender and the submission of the mind, the stillness of the mind. Beloved brothers and sisters, it is sufficient to execute the orders of Allah to pray, to worship, to fast. It is sufficient within the religion. However, to truly learn to serve Allah, we must learn to surrender inwardly as well as outwardly. And it is meditation that gives us the capacity and the ability, the power to truly surrender inwardly. It is time for Muslims, for believers, for people of good intent and good faith to awaken, to rise, to begin to lead again towards goodness and towards truth. This is the purpose of our creation. Allah Almighty said, I have created you and enjoined you to commit and to enjoin that which is good and move away from that which is evil, that which is harmful to humanity. That is our role, that is our responsibility first and foremost amongst all nations, amongst all people, we must be leading towards that which is good. We must awaken to that which is good and warn humanity of that which is harmful and bad. And this applies to all domains of human activity and human endeavor. Everything that human beings involved in, we must learn to again lead towards that which is good and in the service of the Almighty, that which is healthy and whole, that which leads to human happiness and away from the delusions of materialism and the suffering that it creates. And the key, again, brothers and sisters, to awakening human potential is diving deeply inward. It's through what is now referred to as meditation. It's through stillness. It's through surrender. It's through having the courage to, in a sense, die to the outer world and awaken to the world of spirit, the world of truth, the world of light, the world that leads to the divine presence of God. May Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our footsteps, guide our thoughts, guide our intentions, guide our understanding towards that which is pleasing to Him, towards that which leads us back to the purpose of our creation, towards that which leads to the truth and to the essence, to the reality of religion. Holy Ramadan is approaching. We're now in the month of Shaban. Ramadan is less than a month away. And in the holy month of Ramadan is Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. This is a perfect time to begin cultivating presence and connection with that world of spirit, that world of energy, that ocean of power and light, Bahru Qudra. And the connection, the secret, the key is your breath. By learning to breathe and become still, to truly surrender, we put ourselves in a position of presence through humility in which can manifest the divine grace and the will of God. If this resonates with you, if this speaks to you, if this calls to you, brothers and sisters, then this is a good time to, if you have not yet done so, 
perhaps access the Islamic meditation program and begin to learn how to meditate and to breathe, to become still, to become present, to deepen your spirituality. May the Almighty and the Most High bless you and raise you and strengthen you and support you and protect you and your loved ones. Fi amanullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.